Lesson 32, Constructors and Destructors. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new console project and add a new file named main.cpp to it, as we did in Lesson 1. For this lesson, we will use various versions of a class which will represent a point in the XY plane. In our first program, we give a version of our point class that is similar to the classes that we have shown before. This class has a data member for the X and Y coordinates, and a member function which prints out the coordinates in a nicely formatted way. In our main function, we initialize an instance of our point and call the print member function. Executing the program gives this. Oftentimes, we will not want to explicitly initialize our data members. However, if we remove the initialization from this code and execute the program, we see that the coordinates take on strange values that we do not want. Instead of these odd values, we would prefer to have our point's coordinates initialized to zero when nothing else is specified. We can accomplish this with a default constructor. We can think of the constructor as a function that initializes our objects. The default constructor takes no arguments. This default constructor initializes both coordinate values to zero, which we see when we run the code. Like functions, constructors can be overloaded. Now we have added a second constructor which initializes the point using two double arguments. The point's coordinates are set equal to the past in arguments. In the main function, we declare and initialize points using each constructor. The constructor that is called depends on the arguments passed in during the initialization, so that when we execute this program, we see that the first point calls the default constructor and the second calls our new constructor. We can add as many constructors as we like. In this example, we add a third constructor that takes a point as an argument and copies its coordinates to the newly constructed point. A constructor which takes a single argument of the same class type is called a copy constructor. In our main function, we add a third point declaration and initialize it by calling the copy constructor with the second point, so that the third point has the same coordinates as the second point. Executing the program verifies this. In our next program, we remove the other constructors and leave only the default constructor. However, we have added a destructor, which is designated with a tilde. A destructor is called automatically when an object falls out of scope. Every class has only one destructor. The usefulness of destructors will become more apparent in later lessons, so we will just put an output message in this destructor to demonstrate when the destructor is called. In our main function, we initialize a point with the default constructor and call the print function. The destructor is called when we return from the main function. Executing the program, we get this. Generally, destructors are called any time an object falls out of scope and is destroyed. Here's a simple example of a class with just an empty default constructor and an empty destructor. Inside the code block at the bottom, we declare and initialize an object with the default constructor. The destructor gets called when execution leaves the scope of the object at the end of the block. For our last example, we begin by taking a look at an earlier program which had two constructors. When the constructor begins executing, the data members X and Y are created. Since we don't explicitly call a constructor for our X and Y coordinates, they are initialized with the default constructor. Inside our constructor, we initialize the values of x and y. However, we can accomplish the same thing by initializing the coordinates with a copy constructor. The syntax for this is the colon followed by a comma delimited list, like this, or this. If we execute this program, we see that it does just what our earlier program did. However, this example is slightly more efficient since we do not need an additional assignment. This concludes the lesson.